how this all came together because it's it's been a bizarre day. I mean, late night you have Barnett go out, and then right. I mean, was this ever a thought that potentially a guy who's going to fight at eighty five a week from now now could fight a guy who's two thirty? You know, three months ago, before we knew who we were fighting in Affliction, we had talked about wanting to fight Fedor. You know, and people didn't really take us seriously with it. So, I mean, it's been in the back of our mind that we've wanted to fight him. It's, you know, it's Vitor's way of, of proving that he is the best pound-for-pound pound champion, you know, that he could be that. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of person Vitor is, you know. Whether we all wanted that or not, we, we had thought about it. So, um, did we expect this to happen this close to the, to the Affliction show? Absolutely not. You know, last night, around 5.30, we got the call. Um, we had heard that, that Josh had popped for, for steroids. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were the first one in line to, to step up to that fight. I think that, that Tom Atencio knew um, through talking to me in the past that we would definitely want to take that fight if, if it ever came about. So, um, you know, of course, Vitor came to myself and Randy Couture, uh, Ray Seffo, and, and said, you know, the opportunity is there. What do we think? And we all said, absolutely. You know, there, it's a no lose situation for Vitor as far as we're concerned. And, you know, Fedor is the one who's got everything to lose right. if he loses to Vitor. You know, and really, we feel that the only problem that we're going to have to deal with is the size difference, you know, and I really think that the kink that's in Fedora's armor is what Vitor's best at, that's boxing and speed, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a game that we'd love to play. So was there any hesitation at all? I mean, when it came down to it, is it just a money deal? You just want to make sure you're compensated for doing it on short notice and stepping up for a, a, to be a Fedor opponent? Yeah, I mean, we, we had made the decision within a half an hour of hearing that we the opportunity was there, that yes, we wanted to take the fight, and at no point did any of us ever say no. So it, it all came down to Vitor's manager uh, from Brazil, Fabiano, and, and Tom Atencio and the Affliction team. So um, coming together with an agreement financially, you know, and, and as far as we're concerned as of today, you know, we, we accepted the fight. Right. Um, we've heard that the agreement has been made on, you know, on both terms as far as, as financial. We don't know if both, both papers have been signed both, by both fighters. Right. So what we're, do, we're doing, you know, it's, it's Affliction show. It's up to them to, to announce the, the fight. So we, I mean, we can't announce a fight, but we can tell everybody that we've accepted it. Okay, so your side's accepted it. Do you think there's going to be hesitation on Fedor's side? No, absolutely not. I don't. Why not? I don't think Fedor. I, I don't. No? I think Fedor. He plans to, to fight on a certain date. Right. He doesn't, you know, um, really look at who he's fighting. Obviously, he does care, but he's he's been training for a fight, and I think Fedor's. You know the man to, to always just say, okay, I'm fighting August first. Whoever gets in my way. If uh, if you manage. Fedor, and all of a sudden it goes from a guy who weighs 250 to a guy who might walk in at you know 215 and has you know the skills potentially of a guy at 85. Would you hesitate? It seems like it's it's a it's an odd change for him. I think it, I think it's a huge contrast and change for Fedor going from Barnett to Vitor. Right. It's two totally different fighters. Where us going from Santiago to Fedor isn't such a change. It's a right-handed fighter. It's a guy who stalks his opponent. He's probably going to try and get us to the ground just like Santiago wanted to do. You know, so it, it's a tough, it would be a tough change for um, Fedor's camp. Um, I don't think that they think that way, though. I, I think that, you know, Fedor is a confident person, and I think Fedor has a confident camp that they, they won't look at it that way. It's a fight for them, and it's a date. It's not a fight, it's a date. Have you ever trained a fighter to go against him? Uh, never. My never. first time. This right. is, I mean, this is as big as an opportunity is for, for Vitor Belfort. I feel it's as big an opportunity for me. This right. is the biggest fight of my life. Too. I mean, you've talked about the excitement of uh, potentially getting the game plan against someone like Anderson Silva. Is this the same level? Uh, absolutely. You know, I mean, the same level in the way that, you know, people are looking at them as, as unbeatable fighters. I think Fedor is a more consistent fighter than Anderson Silva, and it's a bigger win for us if we beat, uh, if we beat Fedor. So problem areas if... Uh, yes. If he tore to get to get into trouble in this fight, is it if it goes to the ground? I know he's an excellent ground fighter, but from a size standpoint, does he can he can he survive on the bottom? Is that the one really dangerous area? That's the most dangerous. Yeah, you know, Fedor on top of us. We all know that his ground and pound is amazing, and he's very good at using his weight. I mean, he, he's held down guys like Noguera, Noguera before, or you know, consistently pretty close to his size. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're going to have to be careful. You know, but do we think that he can get us there? Um, I think that Vitor is too fast for him. And uh, as far as, as getting stung, I mean, we're, we're prepared to go the distance. You know, we're, we're not expecting this to be as quick a fight as Matt Lillman was. We knew that that was going to be a fairly quick fight. Right. Um, and we're prepared to go the distance for this one. So giving up on that size, you have to be prepared for that. So what can people learn off of the, uh, the Fedor Arlovsky fight? What did Arlovsky do on the feet that you can learn from? Well, I mean, that's really showed a lot of the kink in, in Fedor's armor. Whether Fedor believes it or not, he doesn't deal well with speed. And he doesn't deal well with getting hit. You know, he, he has to shuck the, fight, the punch off before he comes back with his own. So, and uh, the fact that he doesn't move very quick, 
He moves well, he's very balanced, but he doesn't move quick. It's going to be hard for him to keep up to Vitor's pace. You sound pretty confident. I, felt, I sound excited. All right. Excited. All right. And what's uh, Vitor's mindset? I mean, he, he didn't hesitate at all. He's the same way I am right now. We're just real excited to be there and be able to, given that opportunity, you know, we thank Affliction for offering it to us and for thinking about us first. And uh, we just, we, we can't wait until Afflictions, you know, puts it up on all the uh, websites and in all the news forums, you know, wait to go. So You know, I think the answer on this one's obvious, but I'll let you answer it. Uh, so what was the difference with the insistence on fighting at middleweight against Santiago, not wanting to do 205 against Musasi, but taking a fight against a 230 fighter? Is it well, what does Musasi do for us in America? Mm -hmm. well, you know, ultimately, if Affliction sticks around, we'd like to renew our contract with them. But if they don't, we want to go to the UFC. Beating Musasi does nothing for us. Getting beat by Musasi ruins. You know, it's not good for us at all. So fighting Fedora, everybody knows who Fedora is now. And I mean, if he's the best fighter in the world, let's see. So I mean, it, it, that's that's the answer right there. And is there any downside on say he goes in there and just gets crushed? You know, he just he loses. Does that hurt UFC chances? No, absolutely not. I mean, he's he's Vitor Belfort, you know, fighting at, at a much lower weight and uh, and stepping up to bat on a week's notice. We've been dying for great Italian food on the north side of town. Now it's here. Three Tomatoes on a Mozzarella is open on North Craig in North Las Vegas. And don't forget the original spot at 6485 South Rainbow, right near Rainbow on the 215. You want pizza? They got it. Three Tomatoes on a Mozzarella has traditional margarita. You can try puttanesca, chicken pesto, or shrimp scampi. At Three Tomatoes and a Mozzarella, the pasta is out of this world. What do you want? Pomodoro, bolognese, pesto cream. You throw in the meatballs, the chicken, the pepperoni, anything you like. And don't forget, both Three Tomatoes and a Mozzarella have a full bar. Plus, there's happy hour seven days a week from 4 to 7 and 10 to midnight. Your second drink is always $1. And the craziest karaoke in town on Friday and Saturday nights starts at 10 and the bars are open until 2. If you love Italian food and a nice atmosphere, it's three tomatoes and a mozzarella on the north side of the valley at 945 West Craig, or head to the south, 6485 South Rainbow near the 215. It's three tomatoes and a mozzarella.